Hello again and welcome back to week 25 of year 4 of the Religious Education Initiative. This is day 2. We're continuing our way through St. Anthony the Great and his discourse on the attacks of evil spirits. So, so last time we saw St. Anthony explain very clearly how these attacks of the evil spirits upon the faithful show that they have no power over us. He noted that if they had true power, they would not threaten or cajole or deceive, but would simply destroy us. That they do not do so is a strong sign of their utter weakness before the Lord, whose name we bear. This time he will explain how it is that they accomplish what often appears to be their most powerful trick, which is the foretelling of the future. So he says, Furthermore, should they pretend to prophesy, let no one be won over. It frequently happens that they tell us days in advance about brothers who are to travel our way some days later, and these people do arrive. The demons do this not out of any concern for their hearers, but in order to persuade them to trust them, and after that having brought them under control to destroy them. Therefore we must not pay attention to them, but overthrow them even while they are speaking, since we have no need of them. For what is so marvelous if they who use bodies thinner in substance than those of humans, spying those who begin their journey, get a head start in the running and announce their arrival? This sort of thing someone riding a horse also foretells, preceding those who journey on foot. So it is not necessary to marvel at them in this case. They have no foreknowledge of things that have not yet occurred. God is the only one who knows all things before their birth. But these, like thieves, run ahead and report what they see. To how many do they right now give signs regarding our affairs, that we are gathered together and that we are speaking against them before someone could leave from among us and make a report? But some boy swift to foot could do this, outrunning one who is slower. What I'm saying is this. Should someone begin to travel from the Thebaid or from some other place, they do not know before he begins to walk, if he will walk. But after they see him walking, they run ahead, and before he comes, they announce him. And so it is that these travelers arrive after a few days. But often, when people on a journey turn back, the demons are caught in a lie. So too, there are times when they talk nonsense about the water of the river, for when they observe numerous rains occurring in parts of Ethiopia, knowing how the flooding of the river originates there, before the water enters Egypt, they rush ahead and report it. But even men could have told this if they were able to run as fast as these. David's watchman, when he ascended to a height, saw the person approaching better than the man who remained below. And he, as the one running ahead, told before the others not the things that had not taken place, but the things already under way and happening. In just that way, these demons also choose to hurry ahead and declare signs to others for the sole purpose of deceiving. But if, meanwhile, Providence plans something different concerning the waters or the travelers, for this is within its power, then the demons have spoken falsely, and those who have listened to them are deceived. So it was that the oracles of the Greeks arose, and they were led astray in former times by the demons. But so also has this deceit been brought to an end from this time forward. For the Lord came, who reduced to impotency not only their villainy, but the demons themselves. For they knew nothing by their own power, but, like thieves, they pass along what they pick up from others. And they are more nearly speculators than prognosticators. If, therefore, they sometimes speak the truth, do not let anyone marvel at them for this. It happens also that physicians who deal with illnesses, observing the same disease in different people, offer a prognosis, frequently conjecturing from what is familiar to them. And again, ship's helmsmen and farmers, looking at the weather conditions with practiced eyes, can predict if it will be stormy or fair. Now, someone would not say on this account that they are foretelling through divine inspiration, but rather on the basis of experience and practice. So, if the demons also sometimes say these, things thing, these same things by conjecture, let no one for this reason be amazed at them or pay attention to them. For what good is it to the hearers to learn from them days in advance what is going to happen? And what is the purpose of the enthusiasm for knowing such things, even if one could in truth know them? This does not produce virtue, nor represent any evidence at all of good character. None of us is judged for what he does not know any more than one is counted blessed 
because he is learned and possesses knowledge. It is rather in regard to these questions that each faces judgment, whether he has kept the faith and sincerely observed the commandments. Therefore we are not to attach much importance to these other things, and not for the purpose of gaining foreknowledge are we to train ourselves in labor, but rather in order that we may please God in the way we lead our lives. And we ought neither to pray that we might have the power to know things before they occur, nor ought we ask this as a reward for our discipline, but rather that the Lord may be our fellow worker for the conquest of the devil. But if sometime the capacity for, knowledge, for foreknowledge matters to us, let us be pure in understanding. For I believe that when a soul is pure in every way and in its natural state, it is able, having become clear-sighted, to see more and farther than the demons, since it has the Lord who reveals things to it. Elisha's soul was like this when it saw the things involving Gehazi and the armies that stood nearby. So there are kind of three things going on here. The first is St. Anthony is basically refuting any significance to the fact that the demons will often successfully foretell the, foretell the future. He's saying they're not actually telling the future. They're just bringing news before anyone else can. Uh, we would know how that goes. Uh, they're either bringing news before anyone else can or they are making an educated guess based on how things have gone before. It would not be a surprise if someone came to us and said, guess what, in the morning the sun is going to come up. We know that that's not because they can see the future, but it's because they're predicting, uh, based on prior experience, that the sun will rise and when it will rise. So he's saying their predictions are insignificant. They show no power. But then he moves beyond that to warn against desiring for knowledge. Because this is a common thing in the ancient world and in the present day. People want to know what's going to happen. There's a reason that the horoscope section of the newspaper is still popular. There's a reason that, you know, as, as human beings, we crave control. We're always looking for a better, someone who's better able to tell us what's going to happen and how we can avoid it. And fundamentally, this is contrary to the Christian life. We are called to be faithful, uh, as he says there. Uh, the questions that each of us must face is whether we have kept the faith and whether we have sincerely observed the commandments. Are we with the Lord or not? What is going to happen to us is all but irrelevant. Um, uh, we could say more about that. There's a, a anyway. That's beside the point. So that's the second thing. He's warning against that desire for foreknowledge. The third point he makes, though, is interesting because he says those who are pure in heart, those who become sanctified, they do in fact see the future. They do in fact gain often some kind of foreknowledge. They see further even than the demons do. Uh, but this is not. Uh, a trick. This is not for deception. This is a gift of God uh, and, and, and is used in a very different way, not for control, uh, but to bring us closer to God. It's not a thing to be sought, he said, uh, but, but if we do, do desire it, the path to that is purity, faithfulness, and obedience to God. Um, and, and, and this is a phenomenon we do see in the life of the church, and it functions nothing like fortune-telling. So to be clear, if it's not explicit from what St. Anthony says, fortune-telling, telling the future, astrology, um, even, even consulting the horoscope, these things are contrary to the Christian faith. They are anti-Christ. They are sinful. They are destructive. They open the door to demons to tempt us and lead us astray. They are dangerous, and all faithful Christians must avoid them. Uh, there, there, there is no way to sugarcoat this. It is dangerous. Don't do it. And on that somewhat troubling or dour note, uh, we'll wrap up, and we'll see you all uh, shortly for day three. God bless you.